Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. I'm Dr. Deborah Dupree, the Mindset Doc, and this week we're going to take a look at the agile workplace, people, places, and processes. After all, it's a brand new world out there in terms of where, when, and how we work. To give you an idea of where we're headed this week, our first program today is around the changing face of the workplace in the changing face of COVID-19, I've already mentioned, hybrid world. Going back to work the way we used to work is just not going to happen. For some it may, but for many of us it won't. I know my whole world has changed dramatically in light of the last couple of years of the pandemic. And with that, how do we tie in those who will remain remotely? Oftentimes, they're the forgotten workers. So that's today. Our next second program will be on what employees want is different in ways never before encountered. We've all heard about the great resignation, right? Well, many are calling it the great re-evaluation. People had the opportunity to sort of rethink how they live, how they work, and when and where they work. So we'll dive deeper into just what our employees are looking for, what, are the, what drives them. Our third segment of the program is to explore the new possibilities for employees and employers. What shifts are people making? How is our workplace designed today? What do we need to consider? And not only the environment of the workplace, whether it be at home or on site at the organization or via hybrid, what other things do we need to consider in terms of today's employee wellness? Again, taking on a whole new face compared to what we've ever encountered before. Mental health has always been important. However, the uncertainty, unpredictability, and instability has led to increased anxiety. We'll tap into that. Our fourth program is to take a glimpse at some of the emerging technologies. You know, we pivoted very quickly in 2020 and probably made more changes in one year than we had seen in 10 years. And things keep moving on. And so we'll talk about some of the technologies and some of the things to consider. And then our final segment, bringing it all together putting together an action plan for just how do we move forward? What does that future look like? Thinking outside the box, creating a vision, and then how to share that vision. So I'm excited to get going again on Dr. Deborah Dupree, the Mindset Doc. And today, the changing face of the workplace in light of the changing face of COVID-19. Because certainly those changes are not yet over. We expect some more mask mandate changes very soon. And then what will the world bring as we deal with this ever-changing COVID world? I think you probably agree. The world is certainly more complex than anything we've experienced before. The rules, the guidelines, the laws keep changing. As the science around COVID provides us with new data, challenging us to flex in ways and under circumstances where we have no rule book to guide us. As we move along, that's right, no rule book in this ever changing world. However, I would suggest that we can take a look at things that have happened in the past to guide us in how we move forward in the present and in the future. Truly, today's world demands that we pause, step back, and reflect on where we've been, where we are, and how we see ourselves moving forward. Now, that's going to be challenging, more challenging for some people than others. Many of us are are comfortable with routine, 
change is not comfortable. It creates discomfort. Well, there's no right answer here, but it is important to recognize there's no quick answer either. And so developing a mindset that creates some flexibility that helps us look beyond the familiar right in front of us. Creating a mindset where we open ourselves up to having conversations, not confrontations. Many of us have been on edge for a long time, and certainly, again, the world has changed. You know, if we thought COVID wasn't enough, then we also had the social unrest throughout the world, but starting right here in the United States, and then moving on to the political divide and the toxicity that came along with that. Again, there's no right answer, and there's no quick answer. But we can take a look, like I mentioned, at what have we done in the past? What models have people presented on what they've done, how they've worked, and how can we glean from their experience, insight, and mistakes? Because we can use that, particularly when we collaborate, co-labor with our fellow workers, our fellow colleagues, to generate insight, to spark new ideas for how to rethink our worlds of work. Again, it's about shifting the mindset. The old way of doing work is simply a thing of the past. We will never go back to life as we once knew it. Too many things have changed. We as the people, the places in where we've worked, and the processes for how we work. Life is different, and change continues to abound. And so as we talk about the impact of COVID and all that has happened since then, it's important that we do step back. There's a saying I borrow from a colleague, Gabriel Hartley, step back before you step forward. Create that pause in life where you do reflect and contemplate what's been happening, how have I been impacted in the present, and given what's happened and how I'm impacted, how do I want to move forward in the future? After all, we are the architects of our lives. Now, certainly, we can hit some bumps in the road and be challenged by things happening externally. However, I draw upon the work of Stephen Covey, author of Seven Highly Effective Habits. And with that, he talks about being mindful of not getting caught up in all those things out there where we have little to no control or influence. Instead, what he found through a series of anecdotal interviews with hundreds and hundreds of people, the highly affected people are very clear about the extent of their control. And as I like to add, even more so, they know how to manage their response to those external events that are beyond their control. Ineffective people tend to get all caught up in what's happening out there and allowing what's happening out there to derail themselves. What we, what we can do is stop, again, step back, reflect on where can I exercise control? How do I want to manage my reaction, my response to what's happening? Because it's in that moment where we have an, an opportunity to exercise our emotional intelligence. Yes, stuff happens. Even crap happens. But that doesn't mean we have to be derailed, thrown off the track, and have our lives turned upside down. Certainly, we've been in a quite a long period now of that uncertainty and unpredictability. And yet, one of the ways to manage that was to take a look at what can I do in my world. Now, to go on, not only does, did Stephen Covey talk about highly effective people knowing what they control and how they manage themselves, He also recognized the importance 
of highly effective people knowing how to influence others around them and therefore impact people positively and influentially. Positively and influentially. How you show up matters. Whether it's your facial expressions, the look in your eye, the grimace or the smile of your mouth, your body language, taut or tense or relaxed and open. Impact people before you even start talking. So how you show up matters. And I'll take this opportunity to share that 55% of how we communicate is through our behavior. It's all part of our drive to survive. Our bodies start reacting physiologically to what we see as part of that fight, flight, freeze response, autonomically. But again, highly emotionally intelligent people have a good handle on this. And they can make active conscious choices about how to show up differently, persuasively, and influentially. As noted earlier, Covey did find that ineffective people tend to get caught up in things they cannot control, have poor self-management, and lack an understanding of how to influence and impact people positively. They oftentimes are unaware of how negatively they can impact people without even being conscious of it. We're going to get into biases and distortions on another another episode. But for right now, again, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's worth a good read and encourage you to revisit it. They also have it for teenagers, so that's even better in terms of helping bring up the next generation. We have yet to see just how this era of pandemic in our modern society will continue to affect us, those of us who are older, those of us who are middle range, and particularly those of us who are much, much younger, the generations yet to come, the generation Z, the next gen, generation alpha. All of them have been influenced significantly by what's happened, the lack of socialization, um, the inability to focus on their education, which they so strongly need. So as we take a look at our week of topics ahead and we talk about the impact of this pandemic area and how people, places, and processes have been moved, there are three things I want to share today as we launch this week's program. Number one, be proactive, not reactive. Open your mind to look at the world of work differently. Reimagine and rethink your life at home and at your organization. Reimagine and rethink your relationships with your coworkers and the roles and responsibilities of how work is performed. Be proactive, not reactive. Number two, the pandemic has not only forced us into new ways of doing business, where, how, and when we do our work. Probably the most significant thing is, is that we proved we could do it. We had to turn on a dime, and boy, did the human race step forward. And in many cases, when our internet connections were good and strong, people actually became more productive and happier about how they could balance their day-to-day home lives with their work responsibilities. And so as we think about that, again, demanding that our employees come back to our workplace might lead to more problems than you might want to encounter. So it's time to rethink our policies, practices, and strategies for where, when, and how employees work. Because employees have demonstrated that they can do it anywhere, provided the right tools, the right attitudes, and the right support. Number three, it's also time to rethink diversity. It's no longer just about inclusion of race, gender, ethnicity, religion, age, and so forth, but it's also about work locations, work possibilities, 
to generate loyalty and productivity among our workforce, while also creating new opportunities for how we include people, whether they're on site, remote, or hybrid, whatever that might be. And so again, we, it's important we examine our own attitudes and biases. You know, we might have traditional notions about what the workplace should look like and what our workplace has been. But this is where we can challenge ourselves and open ourselves up to new opportunity. Again, be in the moment. Step back before you step forward. Breathe through the moment. Take a few deep breaths just to calm down that physiological reaction of being triggered by being triggered of the unknown or change, by things being different than what we're accustomed to. And then break free from that moment by visualizing how you see the world moving ahead. Each of those three stages engages the brain differently so that we can shift our mindset, and be open to new possibilities. Are you ready? Well, let's get going, because we're going to explore some great topics this week to uncover the agile workplace, people, places, and processes. Coming up next, what do employees want? Well, let's take a deeper dive into that. I'm excited to have you aboard. I'm Dr. Deborah Dupree, the Mindset Doc. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.